Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to connect G Suite to Microsoft Cloud App Security. So within the Cloud App Security Admin Center here, you go under Investigate and you go to Connected Apps. And you'll want to go ahead and select Google Workspace from the drop down here. You can give it a name, just call it Google. In this case, I already have one, so let's call it Google One and you'll have uh, the following information being presented to you. So some of the prerequisites is that you do have to have this business account set up and you can access this cloud platform. And most of you guys, if you're obviously connecting this for your customers, um, will have that already set up. So you'll just need to go to this URL. I'm gonna link a how-to guide in the description of this video, just so you guys have these resources readily available to you. First thing you're going to do here, and I already created one just for showing you this, this demo, but first thing you'll do is click on create project. And you can call this whatever you like. In this case, you want to say MCAS demo. And you can choose your organization and location. This is all custom, obviously, to you. Now click on create. And it's going through. And now we'll go ahead and navigate towards that here. And from here, we're gonna go into the API overview. We'll go into the library, and there's four APIs we're gonna search for. First one is the admin SDK. And we're gonna click on enable. The only thing that's annoying here is having to continually click back out to where you need to go. So I like clicking in there and then clicking back into the library. The next one we want to do is audit API. Click on enable and again click back out to library and we're going to go Google Drive. And we'll enable, again, clicking back out, back to library. Last one here, G Suite Marketplace SDK. And then click on enable. Next here, when we got all those added, we're going to click on OAuth consent screen. And here, what we're going to do is go ahead and click on internal. Click on create. App information, you can simply type in MCAS or whatever you want here. Support email, typically it's the admin account you want to set up. And this could be somebody just within the organization here. You can put in a logo if you really wanted to. And the rest of the information here is, is really custom to you. And the only other piece here I would say is you want to put in the same email as before. And once you're done with that piece, you can go ahead and click on Save and Continue. Here, click on Save and Continue. And then go back to Dashboard. From here, let's go ahead and click on Credentials. And we'll click on create credentials here and click on service account. You can name the service account anything you want. I'm just going to call it service one. And you can put a description if you want to. What you'll want to do here though is give it a project editor role. Click on continue and then click on done. On this page, you'll see the service account now and you'll want to click on manage service accounts. And here you want to click into the actions there and click on edit. What you'll want to do in this section is copy this unique ID. This is the client ID that you'll need later on. And you would just paste this into a separate window. You'll want to create a key and make it a P12. And copy the private key password as well. You'll see that the P12 certificate is generated. And lastly here, you'll click on show this delegation click on enable it and then click on save it'll take you out but you've got that client ID that you copied previously 
that you want to make sure you have as well. And so this is now set up. The next thing you want to do is probably just open a new tab and paste in the following. And we'll make you sign in. And here, what we'll do is click on the security section. Here from the security page, we'll scroll down and we'll select API controls. And you'll click on manage domain wide delegation. And here we'll click on add new. We'll paste in our client ID that we copied earlier. And then the scopes you'll take from our guide here that I'll present to you guys, which is straight from Microsoft. And I would just copy and paste these scopes in there. It is the section under number 12 and letter F, just for reference. But you'll see that in there. These are all comma delineated. You can click on authorize. Now, going back into our other side of things here, we can go back to the main dashboard. We can go back into the APIs overview. Let's go ahead and scroll down here and click on the Google Drive API. And in this section, what we're going to do is go into Drive UI integration. And here what we'll do is we'll give it a name. You can just call it MCAS again if you really wanted to. You can add a short description or long description. And again, this is straight from the doc here, but you can then grab some of the things that Microsoft has pulled here as far as the photos. These are all required for some reason, but in here, I've already got them kind of scoped. And it doesn't have to meet the exact sizes here because they don't even provide those, but you're at least getting close in each one. So I'll go through and I'll just do this right now. I'll be right back. Okay, so that's done now. Now for the drive integration, what we'll want to do here is we will copy this URL straight from the support article. Again, this is number 15 in the support article. We'll paste that in here. And uh, from there, what we can do is just scroll down and click on submit. And it'll give us a success message. And then from here, we'll go back to our API list and we'll find the G Suite Marketplace API. And this is this one right here, Google Workspace Marketplace SDK. In this section, we'll go to the app configuration tab. You'll want to grab this app ID because you'll need it on the MCAS side of things. So again, just paste this in a unique uh, separate window where you pasted the client ID earlier. And from there, the only thing that we're going to need to do is paste in a couple of values. This is again in Microsoft Support Docs number 18. They have a list of all the scopes that we'll need to add here for this particular section. So what you'll want to do is just go through and start copying and pasting these in here one at a time. It's the most tedious part of this process. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've added all the scopes and now I'm going to put in these links and you can put whatever you want here uh, for the name, the website URL, and the email. These really are up to you. And here the only other thing that you'll change before you click on save is making this private. So making it non-public and then you can save those changes. And from there, what we'll do is we will go ahead and pop back into our other tab here. We'll click on the security section. And from here, again, we'll scroll down into API controls and click on manage Google services and just verify that G Suite admin has the unrestricted section here, or unrestricted access. So that's everything on the Google side. Back in Microsoft, you go in and you put in your service account ID, which is again, your client ID. Paste that in here. You'll paste in your project app that we copied earlier as well. We'll browse for that certificate that was generated and populate that here. And then we'll enter the account admin email.
and say that it is a business environment, save the settings, and then they're going to follow this link and it'll ask you to consent to the application as well. And then it'll take you into your OneDrive after you've done that. Since I've already done that for the account, that's why I just moved forward. Back here in the portal, you'll see that it has uh, no recent status here. And this actually took like 10 hours uh, before it started populating data for me. So don't be alarmed like I was where I wasn't seeing anything automatically. And um, I was able to test this okay, but still no data was coming back for a little while. So just be aware of that in, in the case of your configuration not being right versus like just needing to propagate. So what I recommend is you set this up, you wait overnight, and then come back in here to see if things are starting to report back before trying to switch up your configuration at all. So after that's done, you know, you'll know you begin to see the administrator activity and also user activity come through here. You'll be able to see the certain files from G Suite as well. So I can see all the information about the drives, so like information about who was deleted, I can see collaborators on the additional documents and I can see who the owners are. And then I can perform other admin tasks again straight from within this portal. So that's what makes it pretty powerful. The activity log also reflects this as well too in the sense of what you're doing. And here I can see if I'm logging in and all the actual audit log activity of you know, file creations, anything that was changed in the account, and we're looking at this activity as well too, where you can dive in and learn a little bit more about what's going on with uh, the certain activity. So that's everything I wanted to show for you guys in this video on how to connect G Suite to Microsoft Cloud App Security. If you do have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like or subscribe if you guys wanna see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space.